students continuing on with our cumulative review um, so the video is stopped at number 33 in between so I'm going to finish up 33 so if you remember correctly what we did we separated this into a rectangle and a triangle so this was 50 times 40 which was 2000 and then for the triangle we have to find the parts now they said that the triangular section is where they planted flowers and the rectangular section is where they planted veggies. So we know this whole thing is 80, and from here to here is 50, so from here to here has to be 30. And then the height of the triangle has to be the same as this side right here, 40. To find the area of a triangle, it's base times height divided by two. Oh, let me get, there we go. So we're going to do 30 times 40 divided by 2, 1,200 divided by 2 is 600. So the area of the flower garden is 600. So the total area would be the veggies were 2,000 plus the flowers were 600 for a total of 2,600. All right, so now we answer the questions. So Andy will plant 1,600 square feet of veggies. No, it was 2,000. He'll plant 600 square feet of flowers. Yes, that's true. So B is true. Andy will plant 2,500 feet of veggies. No, again, it was 2,000. The total area is 3,200. No, the total area was 2,600. So E is correct because it says the area is 2,600. And then it says he will plant 2,000 square feet of flowers. No, that's veggies. Okay, moving on to the next one. 34. Points representing the length of a rectangle are 0, 0, and 8, 0. It says the width is half the length. What is the area of the rectangle? All right, so the area is length times width. So we have two choices. We can graph it right here, 0, 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here's 8, 0. The distance from here to here is 8, and that's your length. They said the width is half of the length. So half of the length is 4. So here's our rectangle. It would be 8 times 4, which is 32. So our answer is going to be 32 square feet. That's if you were to graph it. However, we also did learn that we can find the length of AB by just using the coordinates. So here were the coordinates, right? Oh, this was eight, zero. You cross out the parts that are the same, so it looks like the y's are the same, and because they're both positive, you subtract their absolute values, so the length of AB is eight, so that's the length, the length is eight, the width is half of the length, because that's what they told us in the problem, so it's four, so eight times four is 32. Answer is C. All right, next one, box plot. All right, box plots, what we have to remember is that we have an upper extreme, lower extreme. Let's find everything. So 47 is our lower extreme. 53 is our quartile one. This right here is our median. So we're going to read down. It looks like this is 62. That is our quartile three. And our upper extreme is 69. It looks like our median's in between, so it's 56. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to list them over here. So lower extreme was 47, upper extreme was 69, high and low. Then we had quartile 1 was 53, I'm just reading. Quartile 3 is 62. So right there we can find the IQR, right? Subtract these two. And then the median was 56. Now the other thing that we have to remember is that as we move from point to point in a box plot, it represents 25%. So from there to there is 25%, from there to there is 25%, from here to here is 25%, and from here to here is 25%. It splits the data into quarters or 25%. So we have to read each part and see which is true. Right, let me move this over. There we go. I'm moving this over. Here we go. All right. It says exactly 50% of the students are less than 62 inches tall. All right. So here's 62. Well, 62 
exactly 50%? No, this is 25 plus another 25 plus another 25 is 75%. So no, that's not true. The tallest student is 69 inches, true. 50% of the students are at least 56 inches tall. All right, so here's 56, at least 56. 25% plus 25%. 25 plus 25 is 50%, so that would be true. True. So, so far, B and C are true. D, 25% of the students are less than or equal to 53. All right, so where's 53? Less than or equal to 53, yes, 25%. That is also true. There is a range of nine inches of height. All right, range is your high minus your low. So my high is 69 minus my low is 47. If I subtract them, I get 22. So no, that's not true. 25% of the students are greater than 62 inches tall. So let's find 62. 25% greater than, yeah, from point to point is 25%. So our answer is B, C, D, and F. 36. Raul determined that a 98-minute movie download on his computer took 15, 14 seconds. At what rate? So we want to find the unit rate. So the movie download was 98 minutes, and um, it took us, uh, this was actually in seconds, wasn't it? So our seconds was 14. So I got to figure it out for one second. So you divide this. You divide 98 divided by 14. All right, so let's see, it's about 15. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try seven. Four times 28 carry the two, oh, I got lucky, that's 98. So the answer is 98 movie downloads per one second. It's number 36. All right, 37, 37, what they want us to do is they want us to create a histogram. So in order to create a histogram, you have to create a frequency table first. All right, now this setup gives us clues about what our frequency, frequency table setting um, setup should be. So it looks like, remember, this has to be our intervals. This is gonna be our tallies, our tally marks. And then the last column has to be frequency. The frequency is always going to be on the y-axis, and this is where our intervals are. So look, they gave them to us. We're going by 10, 0 to 9, 10 to 19, and 20 to 29. And what they want us to do is they want us to create a histogram with that. Remember, a histogram is a type of bar graph where the bars are connected and there's intervals on the x-axis. All right, so I'm going to put tally marks for each number, for each number that's in the data. So 9, 19, 25, 13, 17, 17, 15, 22, 24, 20, 15, and 18. Now the frequency is just the count of your tallies. So there's 1, this is what, 6, this is seven, and this is four. There's our tallies. So now we use this column and this column. So this is already labeled zero to nine. I have to go up to one. Now remember, you wanna make the bars equal. Now from 10 to 19, we have to go up to seven. So connected to this, I'm going up to seven and draw my bar. And then from 20 to 29 is four. So connected to this bar, I'm going up to four and there's our histogram. Notice the bars are connected. This shows equal intervals. Next one. It says a triangle QTU has vertices 2, 8, and 2, 2, and has an area of 36. All right, so I know that the area is base times height divided by 2. Plot possible points for you. All right, so what they told us is the area is 36. So if I look here, this is giving me the, I have to figure out what this length is. So if you just use the coordinates, cross out the twos, eight minus two is six. Or also notice that the graph is counting by twos. Two, four, six. So the height is six. So 36 equals the base times the height, which is six divided by two. All right, now this is an equation we're gonna have to solve for the base. We need to know how far. 
On this side, look to see what you could do. Couldn't you do 6 divided by 2? 6 divided by 2 is 3. So it's asking you, what number times 3 is equal to 36? Well, hopefully you're going to say 12 is equal to b. But the way you solve it is divide by 3, right? Do the opposite of multiplying, you get 12. So we have to go 12 either this way or 12 this way. We're going to go 12. All right, so there's going to be two possible answers. We also could go this way, but it looks like they want us to do it in the first quadrant. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Remember, you're counting by 12s, uh, by 2, sorry. So this is the point 14, 2. That's one coordinate. And then the other one's going to be right here. Look, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. This is the point 8, comma, sorry, 14, comma, 8. So there are your two answers. 14 comma 2 could be one answer or 14 comma 8 because it could either go like this or it could go like this. We have this as our triangle. Number 39, it says Lynn is 4 feet 10 inches tall. She compared her height to her younger sister Anne and found out that Anne is 14 inches shorter than she is. What is Lynn's height in inches? All right, so here's Lynn. So we know that there are 12 inches in one foot. So she is four feet, let's write what Lynn is. She's four feet plus another 10 inches. I have to change this feet into inches. Well, four times 12 is 48 inches plus the 10 inches. That means Lynn is 58 inches. Now, Anne, Anne is 15 inches shorter, so 58, take away 15, right, she's shorter, so that leaves her at 43 inches. So it says, what is Ann's height in centimeters? Okay, now they gave us the conversion. They told us one inch is two and 54 hundredths of a centimeter. She's 50, excuse me, 43 inches tall. So if she's 43 inches, we have to multiply that by two and 54 hundredths, because this is for one inch, you need 43 of them. Multiply. 12 carry the one, 16 carry the one, seven. Move it over. 16 carry the one, 21 carry the two, 10. Now you add, 12 carry the one, nine. You have to move it over once, twice, once, twice. So the answer is 109 and 22 hundredths. That's how you would change it to centimeters. They gave us the conversion here. Okay, moving on, getting there. All right, number 40, all right. It wants to know which are of the following are equivalent to this. Now what I see is that I have six fives that are being multiplied. So this to me would be five to the sixth power. So I gotta see if these are also equivalent. All right, so if I expanded this out, five times five times five multiplied, 5 times 5 times 5, does that work? Yes, because you have six fives. Let's try this one. 5 times 5 to the fifth power. 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. How many fives do you have? You have six fives that are being multiplied. So yes, that's true. It's not going to be 15 times 15. You can't just take these and multiply. Absolutely not. 5 to the 6th power, yes, we already know that. We know that 5 times 6 is not going to be the answer. This is a lot bigger than 30. And now it's the last one we got to do. All right, so 5 times 5 is 5 squared times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Expand it out. How many 6s do you, 5s do you have? You have 6 of them, so that would work. So A, B, D, and F all work. All right, 41. Larry, Chris, Greg, and Pat collected cans for recycling. Before lunch, they collected a total of 173 cans. At the end of the day, the total number of cans are represented by the expression 173 plus n. All right, so this is what they did in the morning, and then this is what they did in the afternoon. Now, what it says is that what could n in the expression represent if you know that Pat collected some of the cans? Okay, so let's just read each one. The combined number of cans in all four, it, this, it, this represents the combined number of cans for all four collected in the afternoon. 
Yeah, that's true. All right, let's try these. The combined number of cans for Larry and Chris collected before lunch. Before lunch? No. The number of cans Greg collected in the afternoon? No, because we know that Pat collected some of them. Same thing, the number of cans Chris collected in the afternoon? No, because we know Pat collected some of them. All right, here we go, next one. Griffin surveyed his students about the number of pets they had in their homes. He displayed the results in the dot plot. How many people did he survey? All right, so with this, just count. Remember, each data value represents what each person said. So you count the dots. How many dots are there? Well, count them. When you count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. There are 24 students who were surveyed because each one represents a dot. And then the last one, it says the dot plot shows the number of minutes it took Lydia to get to work each morning for the last 27 days. Select all the statements that are true. That means two or more, right? Never all of them. On about half of the mornings, it took her longer than 57 minutes. All right, when I see half, I'm thinking, let's look at the median. All right, so I'm going to cross out the ends, cross out the ends, cross out the ends until I see where the median is. Cross out the ends, cross out the ends, cross out the ends, and keep going. All I'm doing is I'm crossing out the end numbers until I see where my median is. All right. So it looks like the median is going to be, what is this, 59. So is this longer than 57 minutes? Yes. The greatest amount of time it took Lydia to get to work was 60 minutes? Well, the greatest was 62. That's not true. The amount of time it took Lydia to get to work that occurred the most was 59. Absolutely, that's the peak, right? We also call that the peak or the mode. It says the times it took Lydia to get to work were evenly distributed between 52 and 62. This is not even, so that absolutely is not correct. And the last one, the least amount of time it took Lydia to get to work was 52 minutes. Absolutely true. So the answer is A, C, and E. And that concludes our cumulative review.